Hey guys, I'm Tori Sterling. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing the long-awaited spin instructor Q&A. How I became a spin instructor, all that good jazz, my spin story, and everything like that. If you guys are new to my channel, first off, hello. Subscribe to my channel. I'm Tori. I upload content all the time. But if you guys are new and you guys don't know, or maybe you're just a follower of mine, but you don't know this fun fact about me, I am a spin instructor. So I have been teaching spin for, it's been about five months I've been teaching spin. My first class was March. So yeah, I'm a spin instructor. I'm 19 years old. I started instructing when I was 18. So this is sort of like how I became a spin instructor, how I became a spin instructor at so young. Also just know that this isn't going to make you a spin instructor if you guys like do what I say. Um, this is just my experience. Every place is different. Every studio has its own ways of going about things. The spin that I do is rhythmic spin. So it's not like if you're going to go, to go to like an LA Fitness or like a YMCA. It's not like a traditional spin class where you're sitting most of the time and you are doing like intervals of like hill climbing and like no moves on the bike and it's all very like incremental with like climbs and hills and whatever it's not like that um so I do rhythmic spin and rhythmic spin the best way that I can explain it it's it's riding to the beat of the music so if a beat is like one two one two your legs go right left right left so it's I don't want to say it's like more intense than traditional spin but it definitely challenges you in different ways than traditional spin does for rhythmic spin you are up out of the saddle most of the time the saddle is like the seat so you're up from the seat most of the time you don't really sit other than like when we do weights or sometimes you know if you want to back off you go you ride at your own pace so you can sit down in the seat but like most of the instructors will tell you to be standing up for most of the time it's just a different type of workout um so this one's a little more dancey and traditional spin is more just sitting down and riding a bike while this one's like dancing on a bike so it just depends like what you like more and what you prefer that's basically what rhythmic spin is i've also posted a bunch of other videos on my channel showing you guys like inside a spin class so i'll have a lot of those links down below so let me back up to last year no i guess it was 2015 let me back up to 2015 it was november of 2015 and i was in new york with one of my best friends at the time hallie and soul cycle was pretty big and it was only in the locations of new york and la so i mean it was it was a really big thing but it wasn't like as popular as it is now we were like um let's go work out and let's try a soul cycle class because we've never done it i went to soul cycle and i fell in love with it so i wanted to take that experience home with me and find a studio closer to my house that wasn't in new york city that i could do um the same type of workout when i came home my best friend hallie and i started like looking for all these studios and we saw this one studio close by and it was called soul beat studio so we went there we checked it out and we fell in love with it it was so much fun um i started going to soul beat religiously in like march of 2016 so i that's also when i got really into fitness and i credit a lot of soul beat to me losing so much weight but i was only working out at soul beat like i wasn't really going to the gym or anything like that um so i was going to soul beat from march of 2016 until august of 2016 because in august of 2016 i left for college and i went to the university of alabama for one semester and then i transferred home because i didn't like it but besides the point when I was there for like that seven month period of time, I was there about three to four times a week spinning. And then they also have bar there at Soul Beat, but I don't do bar. I mean, I do bar, but I don't teach bar. I take the classes there. So when I started going, I really was so bad at it because I was having a really hard time keeping up with the beat and, you know, finding my rhythm with it and then doing all the moves on the bike. So you do like push ups and crunches and obliques and taps and chaturangas and you like move side to side so it was pretty challenging for me but it wasn't a challenging where i never wanted to go back it was a challenging that i wanted to work at and it was challenging because it was something new because i've never done a workout like this before so i mean if you're new and you're worried about spinning i wouldn't say like you know you don't need to be worried about it because everyone has their first time spinning and it's going to be challenging because it's not a workout that we're all used to it's something so fun and so new and it's a great way to challenge your body and try something new um when i started going i knew that i wanted to instruct right when i got there because i love the energy i love the vibe and i love the atmosphere so much but i mean it definitely took me a couple of months to get my rhythm in it and to find my kind of like how i ride and the way i ride and what works best for me and like everything like that but I mean, it like I said before, it didn't discourage me from going to class because it was something that I wanted to work at and something that I wanted to be better at. And you know, there there's a point where you can ride at your own pace and all that sort of stuff. So I was able to do my own stuff and get my own workout and have it be really challenging. But around the summertime, like May, like end of April, May, June-ish, I became pretty good at riding and I was able to keep up with 
the beat pretty much the whole time and do all the sprints and everything but I mean by no means were the classes getting easier I was just getting stronger as a rider but each class challenges you in a different way than the class does before so I was still being challenged mentally and physically each class and it was just such an addicting feeling and like you get such a high from it, it just feels so good so I was doing that for a little bit of time at this point when it came like to August I was really sad because I felt like I was becoming a really good rider and I was being really strong at it and then I had to go and go away to college and there is an rhythmic spin studio in Tuscaloosa so I was pretty sad about that so then I left for college and then I came back in January and that is when I became really dedicated and really determined to um, instruct that was what I wanted to do that was like my goal for the new year I wanted to be a spin instructor so I started going to classes pretty much every day I'd say in January and then it sort of just became a point where, you know, if you're going to the studio for so long, you get to know the clients, you get to know the instructors, it's all a family in there. So I was getting pretty friendly with everyone in there. And, you know, I was friendly with all the instructors and all that sort of stuff. So there came a point where I was just like, okay, I'm ready for the next step. Like, I feel like I'm a strong enough rider to do this. And I want to do what's next. I went to the owner of the studio. Her name is Shoshana. I went up to her and I said, hey, I want to instruct. And she said, yeah, okay. So let's train you and let's see where it goes. I'm not going to say yes right now. I'm not going to say no. Let's just train you and see where it goes. So then I had to train to instruct for about mm, two and a half, three months. The whole time, how it worked pretty much was I would have one-on-one -on -one sessions with Shoshana a couple of times a week so it was very personalized training between just her and I and what we would do is we were working that whole time to make a playlist for a demo class so what I would do is I'd pull songs that I like to create a playlist and then we'd work on three of those songs at a time in each session that we would do and we'd perfect every single song and make sure that it was perfect and that I could ride to it well and that I could instruct it well and that I could actually teach it and not just ride to it you know learn the difference between being a rider and being an instructor they're very different so it was important to like learn how to how to teach a song instead of just ride to a song. And then throughout this time period that I was doing one-on-one -on -one sessions with her, I was also riding shotgun up on stage, which is pretty much where there's the instructor on the stage and then the trainee on the stage and then the class is over there. So um, I was just riding up on stage with the instructor the whole time. And that was probably the most challenging part of training because when you are riding shotgun on stage, like you cannot slip up at all. You have to be on the beat the entire time and you cannot back off because everyone's watching you you are like it's announced that you're trained to be an instructor so you kind of have to prove yourself to the clients and to everyone else that you are like strong enough to ride and strong enough to be this instructor that they are supposed to take classes from you and also you have to learn to not look at yourself when you ride and just feel more of your body when you ride um, you have to learn to look at the clients and smile and not like look down at your bike and be awkward and stuff you have to learn how to communicate with your clients and you know speak through your classes and all that stuff so that's definitely the most challenging part you know there's just no room for being tired there's no room for mistake and you know that was also a really great part of training though because there are so many days not so many days but there are days when you're an instructor where you're tired or you don't want to get out of bed or you might be having a bad day and you know you don't want to go put on the show and you don't want to go instruct and preach positivity when you're just down in the dumps or when you're exhausted and you have to give all of your energy to making this one class amazing um it's challenging and riding shotgun really teaches you that and really trains you in that aspect because there were so many days it's when i was riding shotgun there were so many days that i was like i don't want to be riding shotgun right now but it trains you to be a great instructor and it trains you to put your feelings aside and to let go because when you're an instructor it's a very selfless job it's not about this the the workout is no longer about you when you're an instructor it's about other people and creating the best workout for every other person in that room except for yourself you really have to learn to disconnect so i think shotgun really trains you incredibly well in that aspect it was a very mental thing and it was a physical thing as well it builds up your stamina and it just gives you a vibe of how to carry through your class that was my training pretty much and then after about two and a half months of working with shoshana one-on-one -on -one and riding shotgun then it came to the point where she was like okay let's try your demo class and see how it goes so the demo class was on march 12th i think it was it was really really fun and the demo class i think surprised a lot of people because i always knew that i had it in me to be the instructor that i wanted to be and all that stuff but i don't think other people really realized that until my demo class 
After the demo class, um, I was pretty much given the okay to start teaching and be like on the schedule. So then I started getting my first class, which was Friday 9.30, and then I got added in Tuesdays at noons for lunch crunch, and then I got added in Thursdays 5.45 a.m., and then I got Thursdays 7.15 p.m. So those were like my four times on the schedule. So I am on the schedule every single week, four classes a week, but I normally do sub more times throughout the week. So like last week I taught seven classes, the week before that I taught taught four the week before that I think I taught seven the week before that I think it was eight so you know it just changes like this week I'm teaching five so it just changes every week because you know there's subs that are needed and um, there's always like a chance to pick up extra classes and I love teaching so much so I always try and pick up the most classes that I can so that was how I became an instructor and how I like trained and stuff like that if you guys want to be an instructor my biggest tip for you is to find a studio and to stay dedicated to the studio and show the studio that you're very committed to it take a lot of classes there there has to be an it factor about you like what sets you apart from any other of the instructors already in the studio you have to have something to set you apart from the others so I think that's really important is like finding your groove finding your style and you know you're gonna find that the more you instruct and everything like that but that's something that you have to remember is that what is it about you that sets you apart a while ago I asked you guys for questions so let me find these questions Marie makeup 101 she asks how's the pay um, you don't have to explain your exact wage, but like, is it a decent or part-time job? Um, so the pay, I'm not going to say how much I get paid, but you do get paid per class. And, you know, you can make it a full-time job if you wish, but I do mine part-time. Malia McCullen asks, what muscle groups does spin work on? So spin is a full body workout. Now it is mostly cardio, but it does tone everything. So when you ride, it's most important that you ride with your core, believe it or not, not your legs. I, I know a lot of people like to think that it's in your legs, but I ride with my core most of the time. And it's a lot of high knees, like you bring it up, 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 instead of like pushing down, down, you know, bring it up. So you use your core, your obliques, all that stuff, it works all that. Of course it's gonna work your legs because it is, you know, spinning, you do use your legs a lot, so it does tone up your legs and work your legs. But we also do moves on the bike, which will tone your arms and your back and everything. We also do um, a song in there where you do weights, so we, you know do a little arm workout with our weights and we do that for about four to five minutes four to six minutes so that turns your arms your shoulders your back your chest um yeah it's a full body workout who slash what motivated you to start spin and then further to become an instructor so i sort of already talked about what made me want to start spin but i didn't really touch on what made me want to be an instructor so what made me want to be an instructor was that i've always known that i love teaching and i think that's a big reason why i like my youtube channel a lot because i would do like tutorials and stuff and i would teach you guys how to do makeup and i always had a fascination with being like a teacher and everything like that so when i started going to spin i knew that it was something that i always wanted to do like i knew that i always kind of wanted to be an instructor but then as i started getting much better at writing and as a client every class was challenging but I wanted to do what was next and I wanted to push myself even more like what was the next thing up and to me that was instructing so I wanted to get out of my comfort zone and challenge myself even more and bring myself to the next level which was being an instructor do you have to take a certification or anything yes you do have to be certified to teach spin what's your advice as a spin instructor for getting into a spin so my biggest advice is to just go like I know so many people are always so scared like someone messaged me while I was filming this video just now and he said I really want to go to one of your classes but I don't think I'm like in shape enough to go just go I mean you're not gonna go and be like amazing at it your first time like you can't go into it thinking that you're just gonna be like the best spinner there ever was in the whole world because it's not gonna be like that you know it's hard it's a hard workout but it's a fun workout it's challenging and it's rewarding so I would say just go and if you don't like it go again and just keep going because it's it changes your body, it changes your mindset, it changes everything. And um, I think you just absolutely have to go and just get out of your comfort zone. Be comfortable with being uncomfortable and just do it. All right, and that was pretty much like all the questions that I liked and that I was asked like all the time. So yeah, that was my video on how I became a spin instructor at 18. I'm now 19. I taught my first class in March when I was 18. Then I turned 19 in April. So yeah, that is how I became a spin instructor. I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. I hope this answered all of your dying questions about how I became a spin instructor, how to get into spin, everything like that. So yes, I love you guys. Have a great rest of your day and I'll talk to you in my next video.